Right, guys, here we are, MMA UK News. Obviously, myself, Stoomboy, as always, MMA UK BJJ show. So, uh, talking about Grapple Fest 11. So, Grapple Fest 11, going to be at the usual place, Fusion Nightclub, Fleet Street in Liverpool. Now, it's going to be on Saturday, the 26th of February. I believe the doors will open up around about three ish, so three, half three. First fight, I believe, is going to be on about four o'clock. Uh, Grapple Fest is usually quite punctual, so obviously the first fight should start uh, bang on four o'clock. So it's going to be Daisy Fresh versus Europe. So Daisy Fresh, Heath Pedigo coming over with an absolute team of savages to take on some of the best in Europe. Um, so it promises to be an absolute fantastic night. Obviously, you've got some massive names on the card Um as usual, I mean, Grapple Fest always put on a fantastic event. So, um, tickets are sold out, guys. So, if you were expecting to get any tickets or waiting nearer the time, you've missed your chance. So, it's absolutely sold out. There might be some fighters might still have some tickets available, um, but I don't believe so. I'd say quite a few fighters I've spoke to already don't have any. So, best place you're going to be able to see it then is going to be on Flow Grappling. Um, now, anybody that's never been on Flow Grappling or never signed up before, uh, make sure when you go to the checkout, you're choosing the monthly option. Otherwise, uh, you will be charged the full year. I think it's about 114 quid or something like that. So, so if you're only going to get it just for this event, then make sure you choose that monthly option and then you can cancel it, obviously, after uh, you have watched the event. So, obviously, my next guest uh, is going to be on the show. Uh, so, Andrew Hardwick. Andrew's going to be up against now... I'm probably going to say this name wrong, all right? So I'm pretty sure Amadeus could obviously remind me on the night. So Amadeus Arczewski, I think. So uh, as I say, it's probably a horrible pronunciation. So apologies for that, Amadeus. So, uh, so yeah, Andrew Hardwick uh, of Alley Cat Academy. So again, another fantastic gym, um, obviously ran by Neil Atkins. So Andrew, absolute pleasure to have you on, buddy. How are you doing? Uh, hi, mate. Uh, thanks for having me on. Um, yeah, I'm doing pretty well, Paul. Cheers. Nice, nice. So, obviously, with you then, I mean, how's... Uh, I know, obviously, you're, you're not training at the moment, uh, but how's uh, how's your training generally going for yourself? Yeah, training's going pretty well. Um, I've just um, had a bit of a, a, an injury last year, so spent most of last year sort of coming back from surgery. So, I was just starting to sort of tail end of the year, um, sort of November time. Just starting to hit the ground running, really starting to feel good again. Um, had a had a quick sort of warm up uh, super fight towards the end of the year. Um, felt good in that, and then yeah, just the, the ball's been rolling a little bit. Obviously, mild setback at the minute, being locked inside with COVID. But other than that, um, yeah, we're feeling pretty good, feeling back to my best. Definitely. You talked talk about the knee injury. So did that happen? Was that uh, during the lockdown? You managed to get that sorted last year. Or? Um, no, so it was. Um, I I did it in April. I, don't, I can't even remember if we're in lockdown. There've been that many of them, but I did it in April yeah. of last year. Um, it was a, well, it was a reoccurring injury I've had for a long time, um, and it just sort of sort of reared its head in April. Um, managed to get surgery sort of relatively quickly, considering all the COVID stuff. So I think I had surgery in sort of tail end of summertime, and. Um, but luckily, it's um, I, I just had some menis- some of my meniscus removed, so it's a relatively short sort of rehab process. So I was back sort of training within eight weeks. So it, it, yeah, like sort of like I said, the tail end of the year is just sort of about building back up, getting confidence back up, and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, and then obviously um, you train. We mentioned Ali Cat Academy, obviously under Neil Atkins. So how how's the gym? Obviously uh, now, obviously January is open. I think obviously a lot of new members come in in January. Yeah, yeah, the gym's flying, mate. Um, I mean, I, I'm quite fortunate that I've been with Neil since the start, since pretty much like one of the original members. So, uh, <clears throat> um, so yeah, considering like where it, we started with like 10 guys on like shitty little ply mats, um, the gym's absolutely booming now. Like, I think the membership is, is like through the roof. Like, like you said, January, everyone's back and motivated now. So, um, yeah, we've got some busy mats at the moment. Nice, nice. Neil's a sound guy, really, really nice guy. I mean, yeah, he's a good guy. Met Neil a few times. Um, we're quite similar. We're small. We're very, very <laughs> small. So, um, so we got on very well. Obviously, being the, the short guys of yeah. jiu-jitsu. So, uh, but absolutely nice guy. So, and you said you've been with Neil since the start, then. Yeah, yeah. So I, 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 I've been. I just 
sit, uh, start training in. It'll have been six years ago, sort of ending the se- end of November, start of December. Um, so yeah, so I, I've been with Neil from the start. Um, obviously, training plenty of gyms, travel around quite a lot. Had a lot of heavy influence um, from a lot of the ASW guys, which is why I know Chris so well, yeah. um, like Daz and Cam and people like that. But um, yeah, primarily, I've always been with Alicat from the start. Yeah. And you've got your um, health and performance brotherhood as well. So uh, tell us a little bit about that, Andrew. Yeah, so um, I'm a strength conditioning coach um, as my main job. Um, obviously, we work a lot with like the combat guys, um, a lot of jiu-jitsu guys, a lot of MMA guys. So, yeah, it pays the bills. Um, and then, obviously, it helps with the, the like the competing side of things as well. So, um, it's good. It, it sort of merges quite well into one. Definitely. And we've got the website. So, let's see if we can bring the website up here. So, um, so let's have a look. Um... So I don't know if you could see that. Can you see that okay, Andrew? Yeah? Yeah, 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 I've got that. So, obviously, the website there, guys. So, as you can see, obviously, just goes into a bit about, obviously, telling you a bit about Andrew and so on. Um, obviously, some of Andrew's kind of um, achievements as well, obviously, in uh, jiu-jitsu and grappling. Uh, obviously, been on Grapple Fest a few times as well. Um, and then, obviously, you can see there the Alley Cat logo. Um, so, obviously, you offer online coaching, one-to-one personal training, strength and condition, nutrition management, and so on as well. Um and yeah just uh again goes into talk about again i had a look at this earlier again just goes into talk about obviously what's offered in each of the kind of categories um your obviously your program as well so you've got a, a jiu-jitsu a specific jiu-jitsu program as well um, yeah yeah that that that's currently in the process of being updated i've got some new stuff coming for that yeah. it's a bit a bit outdated i've not updated that for a while so got yeah. some new things yeah. in the pipeline for this year it's quite good as well. I mean, jujitsu um, specific for jujitsu. Obviously, seeing there, so your your twelve month program specifically for jujitsu, and not a lot of people offer that. I mean, a lot of people offer obviously your weight training and uh, and various other things, but I think jujitsu especially, um, not a lot of people offer that that you see out there. Yeah, for sure. Like, it, it, there's definitely a. I think the problem with jujitsu is. I mean, we're going on a bit of a rabbit hole there. Like, the, the problem with the, the jujitsu is there's a lot of association with sort of fads and it's quite easy to cling into certain things and I just wanted to try and at the time when I wrote that I wanted to try and make something that was pretty basic and easy to follow and and yeah. a it was cheap as well it, it, I didn't want to make something that was costing people an arm and a leg so yeah. um yeah like I said the, 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 there are some updates coming this year with that sort of stuff so um got some new different things in the pipeline that I've been sort of working on um but yeah they're, they're yet to be released yet Definitely. I say a lot of people kind of ignore jujitsu, not ignore it, um, but there's nothing specific for jujitsu. So it's good that you're actually doing something specifically for that. And obviously in regards to brotherhood, then, I mean, how do how do people normally contact you if they wanted to to get in touch to set up some kind of program for them? Uh, Instagram's probably the best place. Um, I tend to, I'm a bit shit with <laughs> checking my messages on Facebook. So um, <laughs> uh, Instagram is probably the best place, really. Yeah. Um, that's usually where most people get in contact with me anyway. Um, yes. Obviously, you can use the website as well um, or, or email, but yeah, Instagram's probably the best place, really. Nice one, nice one. So we'll obviously put a post up on obviously our Facebook pages. To, so anybody who does want to get in contact with Andrew, mm-hmm. then certainly hit him up. As I say, definitely some really good programs there for everybody. So um, and then go back to Grapple Fest Eleven. Then so obviously the matchup. You mentioned obviously you know Chris anyway. So I mean, how yeah, did yeah. you find up? Uh, sorry, how did you find out you were going to be on the card? I just I just got a message of Chris. Um, uh, pretty similar to every every time I've been on Grapple Fest, you just you just <laughs> tend to get the message, and when the call comes, you yeah. answer really. Um, yeah. Like I said, I missed the last one because um, I I wasn't quite sure how confident I was going to be with my knee, so um, I sort of shot shot him a message and just uh, like sort of later in last uh, later last year and said, uh, um, in case you were sort of considering me i don't think i'm going to be ready for this that that yeah. one but um obviously if, you, if you'd like to consider me for the next one then i'm, I'm good to go so um i've been very fortunate to be on graph first multiple times um yeah. hold it in very high regard so um and like i said obviously i know chris very well and darren very well so um yeah yeah always, always when, they, when I, one of one of those two call you always answer 
<laughs> definitely, definitely. And I mean, you mentioned you've been on it before, obviously a few times before. It yeah. just seems to be getting bigger and bigger as the years go on. Yeah, it's massive. Um, it, it, it's, re- it's really good to see, to be fair. Like, I think a, a lot of the the scene originally in Jiu-Jitsu, like a lot of the big shows were like associated down south. Yeah. Um, and it, it, it's brilliant for like, for Grapple Fest, obviously being up north, that we've got something that sort of represents like northern grappling, essentially. I know like guys from all over the country and from all over Europe are now on it, but it's, yeah. it's a good opportunity for guys, especially around sort of the north of the, the country. Um, the guys that are up and coming as well, especially can, can really sort of start to stamp the name a little bit more, especially within the sub only scene. Yeah. Obviously we've got quite a good tournament tournament scene, but um, like for, a, for a, a show to come along and, sort of within a relatively short period of time um really set their their foot in the marketplace in terms of like big shows and uh, obviously chris and chris runs it like to down to a t it's like the the show's brilliant really you can't there's never anything at fault like everything runs on time they communicate everything with you and um like from the from the runners in like louise and hannah they they, they do a job make sure everyone knows what they are and you, you you never really have any questions. Everything's everything's handled really professionally, so yeah. um, it's great, really. Uh, like yeah. I, I like I said, it, when when Chris calls, you answer. The, the, yeah. There's no no such thing as no. <laughs> Definitely, listen. They do a great job, man. They've been doing an absolutely brilliant job over the last few years. So, um, and long may it continue. As yeah, they, for sure. They cater for everybody. I mean, from boy belts. I mean, given given obviously kind of young guys a chance. And getting their name out there on on probably one of the biggest shows out there, uh, right up to obviously your your top guys, like say your Dante Leon, your Fion Davies, and um, the Mikey Musamekis and stuff like that, and being able as you you as an eighteen year old blue belt to be in the same mat room as them and rolling about in the same mat as them must be absolutely any eighteen year old blue belt must absolutely love it. Yeah, for sure, man. Like I, I think I to be fair, I think the first time I was on, I was. Uh, blue belt i think it was towards the end of my blue belt time and um yeah it it, is it's one of the things i've always said like you've got to give chris credit for is i think it's tough when especially it's a bit better now um obviously because he's inundated with people that are like sort of want to be on the show but i think at the start it's tough when you've got guys that are only uh that might be like winning and competing in like local events but you've got no real evidence of what they're going to be like on a show um but he obviously took a risk on a lot of guys um, and um, it, it, it's really paid off. Like it's like you said, it's given guys the opportunity to sort of set the platform and, and yeah. make a name for themselves and sort of not go on to bigger things. Cause obviously Grapple Fest is a massive bit show, but it, 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 yeah. it gives them that platform to sort of elevate their career for want of a better word and, um, and get their name about like, I think the first time I was on it, like, I think I, I think like Flow Grappling like reposted the finish I got. So it's like it's a big thing for guys that are like up and coming in yeah. the scene. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a big goal that you get to achieve, especially for guys that might not necessarily want to be like world champions and stuff like that, but are just in it to be as good as they can be. Like yeah. little things like that can can sort of be good things to look back on at the end of your sort of when you come to your end of your your competition <laughs> career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then what about uh, obviously your opponent then Amadeus? Do you know much about him, or are you I just did, one I, of these guys that just go in, put an opponent in front of me, and we'll get him? Yeah, I, 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 I don't know, and there's no disrespect to him. Like, I don't know much about him. Like, Chris, Chris, um, sent me his, his social media in the first. I think his social media is like Hammer the Hammer, um, and um, the first thing I saw was just I just sent Chris a message saying I'm gonna die. Like, this is this is mint. Like, some some big guy, Hammer the Hammer. Yeah. Um, and yeah, no, I don't, I don't know much about him. Um, I don't, to be honest, mate, I don't, I, I very rarely pay much attention. I know I probably should, but yeah. I, I, I just go out and try and perform. Like, you just, I just focus on me, focus on what I want to do and the game that I want to play. And yeah. it is what it is. Like, you, you, I think, on the, I think, especially for like the lower guys, when it's not your job, I think pe- people put too much emphasis on winning and losing and just, just show up and try and put a show on for the, for the fans. And, yeah. And like you said, make it entertaining to watch. Like you, you've got this opportunity to be on a big show and be under yeah. the lights, and and you don't get many opportunities like that. So just go out and enjoy it. Don't worry too much about what your opponent's going to do. Just do what you want to do. 
Definitely, definitely. And what about uh, 2022 then? So it's going to be the first full year since 2019. So what's the what's the plans for you? Obviously, Grapple Fest just around the corner. What do you plan on doing for the rest of the year? Um, to be honest, mate, my aim is just I want to try and get as many minutes in the tank as I can this year. Yeah. Um, obviously, I missed pretty much two years, A, with COVID, and then missed the, pretty much last year without out, out of my knee. So, um so I, I just want to try and get as many minutes in the tank. Like um, I'm, I've got Empire this weekend, which is in in Leeds. God knows how it's going to go with COVID lungs, like. But um, <laughs> um, so yeah, that that that's pretty much a write off. I'll just go out and just just sort of have a play around on uh, on yeah. Saturday. Just just don't worry too much about the result. And then um, on a smaller sort of affiliated sub only show, ASW. Um, Liverpool run like a little interclub thing, um, that, yeah. which is really good. I've got a a, a guy on there, and um, that's in the start of Feb, so that's good prep. And then obviously Grapple Fest, uh, and then that's it for now. I think I've not I've not got too much pending. Um, yeah. Like I said, just try and get as many minutes as my body will allow, really. Um, yeah. Before yeah. obviously having to take a break, try and get at least something in every month. Um, I just try try and make up some time that that sort of I've missed, um, and try and enjoy the the sort of brown belt for as long as I can, really. Yes, definitely. And then one thing I do like to do is go on people's social media, find some funny stuff. Now, up until what two thousand and I think it was two thousand fifteen, two thousand sixteen, every yeah, picture yeah. of you is with a drink in your hand. So you yeah, seem yeah. to be a, a a a drinker up until you took up jujitsu, and then. Suddenly, there was no pictures of alcohol at all. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, it's a long story. So, I, 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 I went for want of a better word, teetotal when I was nineteen. Yeah. Um, just decided that it wasn't for me, and and um, yeah, didn't really like it, and sort of did. I think I did. How old am I now? Twenty eight. So, give or take, like seven or eight years, um, without any alcohol. Um, recently started enjoying a beer or two, but. The, yeah. One of the one of the benefits of sort of abstaining for so long is that I can go out with my mates now, and and the sort of need to get <laughs> like blackout drunk is completely gone. Like I can enjoy like a beer or two, and then it, yeah. it doesn't have that pull for me anymore. So um, yeah. I can actually enjoy a beer for for the sake of having a beer, as opposed to like going out and getting going and getting levered. So um, yeah. yeah, yeah. So like, yeah, about nineteen, I give it up. Yeah. I think in my first year, or second year of uni, and then yeah, um, yeah. So that Mate, some of the pictures, long. some of the pictures were awesome, man. You looked like you were enjoying yourself. You were definitely, <laughs> you were definitely living your life to the yeah. fullest. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice, nah, They were great pictures, man. Absolutely brilliant pictures. <laughs> really. And then, final thing for you, then. Obviously, you've been in the game for obviously a number of years, so uh, you've obviously trained with a number of people. But anybody yeah. you would kind of want to shout out to, so maybe any friends, family members, teammates, anything like that. Um. I mean, you've got the like the usual suspects, like um, so, like Jack Fletcher, Josh Romfell, um, like big main train partners of mine. Um, obviously, all like the extended family at Ali Cat. But then, like it, it, to be fair, I've, I've been very fortunate that to have a lot of sort of friends within the scene. Um, like I said, obviously the the ASW guys have had a big influence on me, like Darren Morris, obviously Chris, uh, Cam, and um, those guys as well. So. Um, they've obviously all like obviously Alicat's always been my home, but like they've had a big influence in in the way I grapple and the way I think about grappling and stuff like that. So um, the 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 I wouldn't be a, a bit of a bit of a cringy thing to say, but I sort of wouldn't be here without their influence as well. So um, Darren, especially like Darren, really changed the way that I sort of thought about grappling. Um, unfortunately, I don't get to go down and see him much anymore because with work and stuff like that. But um, yeah, he's always one I always want to point to, and people ask about grappling. It's like if you've got a spare Tuesday or a Thursday morning, and go down and see him because he he really does open doors and open your eyes to how things can be done. So yeah, um, yeah. yeah, those guys obviously I'm always appreciative of those guys for their help and um, their sort of like guiding and, and pushing me in certain ways, and obviously Neil as well. Obviously Neil's been my main coach for my entire grappling sort of career for want of a better word um, and all the yeah. guys down at like Sakata and stuff like that so um, yeah. yeah yeah pretty much them 
Nice, nice. So I'd say a lot of good people around you. Definitely yeah, have a lot sure. of good. I'd say Neil's awesome. Anytime I've ever met Neil, I'd say uh, always an awesome guy. Always willing to have a chat and things like that. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, of course. Um, it's funny. Most people know whenever I've been to like gyms that are far away, like aren't uh, aren't really in the north. That's yeah. what people always ask where you train, and I always say Neil, and people go, "Is that the guy that?" Chris always shares the pictures of it. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never. No, that's definitely a sound guy. Really, really nice guy. So, um, so yeah, guys, they will have it. Andrew Hardwick is going to be up against Amadeus uh, Arczewski. Um, so, at Grapple Fest 11. So, as I said, it's going to be Saturday, 26th of February, uh, Fleet Street in Liverpool. So, that's Fusion Nightclub. That's a usual place. Now, only place you're going to be able to watch it now is Full Grappling. Uh, so, get yourselves on Full grappling get the event and make sure if you're only getting this event choose the monthly option so uh andrew i'll be there on the night so i'll be able to obviously grab a chat with you oh, um and yeah yeah but listen obviously train safe obviously i was going to say stay away from covid but <laughs> you've got it now man so it's gone yeah, we won't we won't need to worry about that on the 26 so yeah. all right well listen buddy thank you very much again and uh, yeah i'll see you next month buddy my pleasure. Thanks for having me on, mate. All right. Take it easy, mate. Thank Take you. Take it easy, brother. Peace.